U.S. Lacrosse presents the 2016 Rule Interpretation DVD. This year's rulebook contains many highlighted items. While it may appear that many rule changes have occurred, the majority of the highlighted areas are clarifications and edits. This rules DVD covers the major rule changes for 2016. Major Rule Changes Rule 1. Playing Area and Goals Below Goal Markings there shall be two small circles or dots marked on the field below the goal line. They shall be marked five yards from each eight meter mark on the goal line extended. They are to be used for penalty administration in the critical scoring area below the goal line. The marks may be made with temporary materials such as spray paint or chalk. They should be white or a single contrasting color. Rule 1. Playing Area and Goals a visible possession indicator is required. It may be a small cone or other object moved from side to side on the scorer's table that is easily seen from the field. Electric arrows on the scoreboard or at the table are not required but may be used. It is the responsibility of the scorer to maintain an accurate record for and visible change of the alternate possession indicator as possession changes. Rule 2 Equipment and Uniforms The Ball In addition to yellow and orange, lime green balls may be used. Mouthpieces must not have graphics of white teeth. Both ASTM F3077 and ASTM F803 may be used for 2015-16. Beginning January 1, 2017, only ASTM F3077 may be used. Optional headgear. Beginning January 1, 2017, any field player choosing to wear optional headgear may only wear headgear that meets the ASTM F3137 standard for women's lacrosse. One manufacturer's logo, trademark, or reference not to exceed two and a quarter square inches or two and a quarter inches in any dimension is permitted on the outside of each item. Beginning January 1, 2018, home team jerseys shall be light and visiting team jerseys shall be dark. Visible undergarments. Beginning January 1, 2018, visible long or short sleeve undergarments must correspond to the team's predominant jersey color or be light with light jerseys and dark with a dark jersey. All team members choosing to wear visible undergarments must match each other. Facial adornment. Eye black worn on the face must be one solid stroke with no logos, numbers, or letters and shall not extend further than the width of the eye socket or below the cheekbone. Rule 3. Game Personnel. At the pre-game meeting, the team winning the coin toss may choose choice of ends or first alternate possession of the game. Officials. Two U.S. lacrosse-rated officials are recommended. Beginning January 1, 2017, the game must be officiated by at least two certified officials. State associations may consider extenuating circumstances. Rule 4. Time Factors and Scoring Overtime When the score is tied at the end of regular playing time and overtime is to be played, the winner will be decided by sudden victory. The team scoring the first goal wins the game. The alternate possession shall continue from regulation, and all other previous overtime rules shall apply. Rule 5. Play of the game. Goalkeeper restrictions. Goalkeepers may not shoot, score, take the draw, or be between the restraining line on the draw. Violation of any of these restrictions is a free position for a major foul. Rule 5 play of the game. Alternate possession. All situations that would previously have resulted in a throw are now replaced by alternate possession. The recipient of the first possession is determined at the captain's meeting. Alternate possession administration. The alternate possession is administered with the two closest players to the spot of the foul or incident that stopped play. All other players shall be four meters away. Alternate Possession Administration Outside Critical Scoring Area 
If the Fowler incident occurs outside of the critical scoring area, it shall be administered at that spot, but no closer than four meters to the boundary. The opponent shall stand four meters away and nearer to the goal she is defending. All other players shall be four meters away. Alternate possession administration inside critical scoring area below goal line extended. If the Fowler incident occurs inside of the critical scoring area and below the goal line extended, it shall be administered at the nearest dot. The opponent shall stand four meters away and nearer to the goal she is defending. All other players shall be four meters away. Alternate possession administration inside critical scoring area above goal line extended. If the Fowler incident occurs inside of the critical scoring area and above the goal line extended, it shall be administered at the nearest 8 meter mark on the goal line extended. The opponent shall be 4 meters away on the goal line extended on either side of the ball. The lane above the goal line extended shall be cleared if necessary. All other players shall be 4 meters away. Alternate possession. Who's timeout? Once possession is determined, only the team in possession may take a timeout until the next restart whistle. The change of possession arrow happens after the restart whistle to be clear about who can have a timeout. Rule 5. Play of the game. Illegal player. If an illegal player is discovered on the attacking team after a goal is scored and before play is restarted, the goal shall not count. The illegal player shall be removed and play shall be resumed with a free position at the center line. Stick request. The official shall inspect the pocket of any player's cross upon the request of the opposing head coach or any opposing player on the field. The request must now include the player's number. Only sticks that are in use on the field may be requested for a stick check. Rule 6. Fouls. Dangerous contact is any action that thrusts or shoves any player with or without the ball who is in a defenseless position. This includes, but is not limited to, head down, from out of the visual field, in the air, or out of balance, especially in the kidneys, ribs, lower back, shoulder blades, or aimed at the neck or head. This is a mandatory card. Three seconds. The criteria to call three seconds have not changed. It is still a major foul and may be flagged. However, the penalty administration has changed. The foul shall be enforced at the spot of the ball when the call is made. Rule 7. Penalty Administration If the ball is outside the critical scoring area, the penalty is administered at that spot, but no closer than four meters from any boundary. The offender, the player who was in three seconds, is placed four meters behind. All other players must be four meters away. Three seconds penalty administration, inside arc. If the spot of the ball is inside the arc, the opponent is placed at the nearest hash. The offender, the player who was in three seconds, is placed four meters behind. The arc is cleared. 3 seconds penalty administration, inside critical scoring area below goal line extended. If the ball is inside the critical scoring area and below the goal line extended, the penalty is administered at the nearest dot. The offender, the player who was in 3 seconds, is placed 4 meters behind. All other players must be 4 meters away. 3 seconds penalty administration, inside of fan. If the ball is outside the arc and inside the fan, the penalty is administered at the spot of the ball. The offender, the player who was in three seconds, is placed four meters behind. The lane is cleared. All other players must be four meters away. Rule 7. Penalty Administration. Delay of Game. The first offense remains a green card issued to the team. On the second delay of game, the official will show a green and yellow card to the offending player and award the appropriate penalty, major foul. The offending player must leave the field and enter the penalty area for two minutes of elapsed playing time. The team plays short. This card is not included in the team card count. Any subsequent delay of game offenses will result in a yellow card for misconduct and will be included in the team card count. 
Rule 7. Penalty Administration. Goalkeeper Misconduct. Yellow Card. If the goalkeeper receives a yellow card and is the only dressed goalkeeper for her team, the goalkeeper must remain in the game and the team's coach must designate another player who must leave the field and enter the penalty area for two minutes of elapsed playing time. If there is a second dressed goalkeeper, she must substitute. The carded goalkeeper must leave the field and enter the penalty area and the team's coach must designate another player who must leave the field and enter the penalty area along with the carded goalkeeper for two minutes of elapsed playing time. Second yellow or red card. If the goalkeeper receives a second yellow card or a red card, the team must substitute another goalkeeper if available, and the team's coach must designate another player who must leave the field and enter the penalty area along with the suspended goalkeeper for the entire two minutes of elapsed playing time. If there is a second dressed goalkeeper, she must substitute. If there is not another dressed goalkeeper, time will be permitted to dress a field player. However, if no option exists to dress a goalkeeper, no field player may substitute for the suspended goalkeeper for entire penalty time, and the team plays short. In all scenarios for goalkeeper misconduct, the opportunity shall exist to have a dressed goalkeeper, if possible. The offending team shall always play down a player below the restraining lines for the entire penalty time. Definitions Critical Scoring Area the critical scoring area has changed. It now is defined by the fan above goal line extended and extends straight down from the fan to the end line. Youth rules. U11 and below should play 7 versus 7 on a reduced size field. 7 versus 7 may be 7 field players or 6 field players and a goalkeeper. U9 and below, there is no 3 seconds rule. Players must play one versus one within a stick's length in the arc. Violation of this is a minor foul. Game restarts after goals have also changed for U9 and below. Instead of a draw, possession will be taken at the center by the team that was scored upon. The defender shall stand four meters away at a 45 degree angle and all other players must stand. This is an indirect free position. The game and the second half will continue to begin with a draw. The restart rule is not clearly written in the rulebook. Check the online version of the rulebook, the official's manual, and the youth guidebook for the correct version of this rule. Appendix B. Manufacturer's Specifications Changes to the specifications have been made to minimize aftermarket changes to crosses and pockets to reduce unfair advantages as well as provide more specific guidelines for determining legality of crosses and pockets. Measurements in Appendix B are for support of suspected irregularities. It is not the intent of the rules for umpires to measure every cross. Prohibited Alterations USL-approved heads may not be altered. Prohibited alterations to heads include, but are not limited to, baking, drilling additional holes, breaking and or reconstructing with adhesive material, stretching, pinching, or shaving. A cross may be deemed illegal if its design is a clear attempt to circumvent rules, such as positioning shooting strings to create a lip or channel for draw control. New specifications. Molded heads must be attached with a screw. Pocket attachments to the sidewall must be no more than 1.5 inches from the adjacent attachment as measured in a straight line to the inside edges from hole to hole. Thongs must be attached to the head through holes in the scoop and at the ball stop or may be attached through the scoop and or ball stop with a secondary material. This secondary material may not be more than 0.5 inches from the bottom of the scoop or 1.5 inches from the ball stop. Thongs must not be bunched along the width of the head from top to bottom. The design of the head will dictate that the thongs are closer together at the bottom than they are at the top, so keep that in mind when checking to see if they are bunched relative to each other and the space available. Thongs may not touch each other in the upper one-third of the head. Thongs may also not be more than 1.5 inches apart from each other when measured to the inside of the adjacent thong. 
Loose ends of the thongs must remain below the ball stop. Additional strings used for attachment of the pocket to the head of the cross may not be tied behind the pocket above the ball stop. Additional stringing not required for pocket attachment is prohibited. Shooting strings. In this diagram, the two shooting strings are red. As indicated by the top blue arrows, both shooting strings must be attached to both sidewalls. The dotted red box indicates the area between the outer thongs and has two restrictions for shooting strings. Outside the box, the top and bottom shooting strings may not touch each other. Inside the box is where each of the shooting strings may not be coiled more than twice between each thong. Appendix B, Manufacturer Specifications. Stick Check Rules. Pre-game stick checks include the depth and free movement of the pocket and inspection for any alterations. If the cross can be fixed and rechecked prior to start of game, there is no penalty. If the cross cannot be fixed and rechecked prior to start of game, there is no penalty, but the cross goes to the table. If a cross is found to be illegal during the game, it is a minor foul and the cross is taken to the table. If a ball sticks in a cross during play, that cross is illegal. There is no recheck. The cross is removed from the game and taken to the table. It is a minor foul. If the head of the cross becomes disconnected from the shaft, the stick no longer meets specifications. It is taken to the table and there is no penalty. New signals. Four new signals have been added to help aid in communication. Alternate possession shall be used in situations when there are not offsetting fouls. Both arms are at chest level with palms down and fingers touching. Swing them out away from the body and then signal direction of possession. Dangerous contact. One hand held in front of the chest with the palm facing forward and the other hand grasping its wrist. Push forward. Dangerous play. Place one forearm diagonally across the chest. Misconduct. Cross both arms diagonally across the chest. WCLA Rules All women's collegiate lacrosse associate games must play by U.S. lacrosse rules. The following modifications found in Appendix J of the USL rulebook have been adopted for this year. 1. Horizontal stick. Contact with a cross at 9 and 3 that is initiated by the defense is a foul. 2. NCAA rules for uniforms shall be used. Points of emphasis. Dangerous contact. A new mandatory yellow card has been added. Dangerous contact is defined as any action that thrusts or shoves a player with or without the ball who is in a defenseless position. This includes, but is not limited to, head down, from out of the visual field, in the air, or out of balance, especially in the kidneys, ribs, lower back, shoulder blades, or aimed at the neck or head. While some body contact will occur during normal play, there is no justification for deliberate and violent collision by any player, especially intentional player-to-player -player collisions with defenseless players. The increase in the severity of the penalty is intended to send a strong message that this type of play is unacceptable. All participants must work together to reduce or eliminate such violent collisions from the game. Officials must apply this collision rule and utilize the more severe penalty. Coaches must teach players to avoid excessive or illegal contact and support the officials when they penalize such contact. Players need to consider the consequences of this illegal action for the opponent and themselves and choose a legal action to play within the rules of the game. Dangerous contact often occurs when the defensive player has been beaten. Watch as number 3 white has passed green number 9 and is entering the critical scoring area. The green player does not work to get into good defensive positioning, comes from a weak defensive position, and cross-checks number 3 from behind. This thrust into the head and neck area from behind is unsafe. This is dangerous contact and must be carded. In this scenario, a flag may be pulled to allow the attack to continue to goal. A card must be issued after the goal is scored.
Here, white number 17 makes no attempt to ride, channel, pinch, or otherwise play solid defense against the blue player as she runs close to the end line and appears to be losing her balance. White's shove into blue's back sends her sprawling to the ground and almost into the netting poles off the end line. This play is dangerous contact regardless of where it occurs on the field and must be carded. The ball ends up on the ground after the pass from red number 16. Red and white players move to pick it up. Watch white number 4 as she approaches red number 7, who ends up with the ball. White number 4 never puts her stick down in an attempt to play the ball. She continues straight at number 7 red and a violent collision occurs. This lack of body control, in addition to no attempt to make a legal play on the ball, results in rough contact. A legal lacrosse decision and play needs to be made instead of the resulting dangerous contact. Not all collisions meet the criteria for dangerous contact. Look to see what the offender was doing prior to the contact. Was she attempting a legal lacrosse move that ended badly? If so, the action might be a card, but it is not necessarily dangerous contact. In this clip, the end result of the contact puts both players to the ground, and it would be easy to consider this dangerous contact. However, as you watch the play unfold, you will see that the attacker is attempting to set a pick on the defender and steps into the space. This is a lacrosse move that was not executed correctly. She did not allow the correct time and or space for the defender to have an opportunity to avoid contact. It was not an attempt to shove or thrust against the body of the defender. This action is a foul, but is not dangerous contact. Game Management Being a good official is more than calling fouls and setting up penalties. Each game has its own ebb and flow, and good officials recognize that and call the game within the rules while maintaining safety. Game management is the sum of all parts of the umpire's use of her tools to control a game. Confident posture, use of mandatory cards, making the necessary calls to keep the game safe, upgrading penalties when warranted. Partner, player, coach communication with signals, whistle, voice, and calm demeanor. Appropriate holding versus whistling of fouls. Ability to anticipate and diffuse dangerous situations, and understanding the importance of safety and how it applies to aggressive versus reckless play. A key aspect to managing a game and keeping the game safe is using cards for repeated fouls. Notice this first series is occurring in the first five minutes of this game. White 25 surges to goal, but a blue triple team turns her back to her right, where she manages to get a pass off to a teammate. As she releases the pass, blue 22 pushes her further off balance. This foul is penalized. Within a minute, another on-the-body foul occurs outside of the arc. Finally, on the ensuing free position, white is fouled again. Although none of these fouls alone would be considered cardable, nor were they the same player, but a card is appropriately given for repeated major fouls. Later in the half, a similar series occurs. This time there's only two fouls, both on 8-meter free positions, clearly attempting to stop a shot on a goal. Again, a card is given for repeated major foul. In doing so, the official manages the game and the small fouls to escalate into more dangerous fouls. Attack Fouls Officials must be vigilant to watch for and penalize offensive player fouls that lead to dangerous play. During midfield transition and or when going to goal, watch for attack players who force themselves through the defense or hold their stick too close to the body and or sphere, making a safe and legal check impossible. This occurs most often when the player is in a crowd of opponents. If a safe check cannot be made by a defender in a legal defensive position, this is a foul on the attack. When body contact occurs, officials must determine who established position first and who initiated the illegal contact to make a fair call. An attack player who jumps to shoot over the top of defenders or follows through with or without body contact may create a dangerous situation. She does not need to make contact to be called for dangerous and or intimidating play. Sphere 
Remember that the sphere shall not be violated by either the defense or the attack player. Shooters who shoot without regard for this protected area of their defenders are creating a dangerous situation and should be called for dangerous play or dangerous follow through. Contact does not have to be made to make this call. Shooters are always responsible for shooting safely. Dangerous propelling of the ball towards goal on a shot without regard for the defender must be carded. The ball does not have to hit defender or cause her to flinch to be a dangerous propel. Consider force, distance, and placement of the shot against the field player as the criteria for making this call. Rule clarifications and review. Kilts, shorts, or pants do not have to be a solid color. Stick check mechanics. Stick checks need to be consistent and cover the key elements to ensure legality of the cross. Correct pocket depth, free ball movement, and compliance to manufacturer specifications. Do an inspection of the pocket, head of the stick, and shaft for compliance to manufacturer specifications as outlined in Appendix B. With the stick held at eye level, check that the top of the ball is visible above the top of the sidewall after reasonable force with one hand has been applied one time and released. Roll the ball towards the ball stop and back to see that the ball moves freely within all parts of the head and pocket, both laterally and along its full length. The ball must easily fall out of the pocket if the cross is turned upside down. Horizontal stick. Illegal contact revisited. The term horizontal stick has commonly been used to describe the rule of illegal contact. Be sure to use the correct criteria to determine whether or not a foul has occurred. Horizontal is defined as having the head of the stick below 10 or 2 o'clock. Contact must be made with the stick in an illegal position to call the foul. If contact occurs, the defense will be called because of the illegal stick positioning. A meet and greet between the defense and attack with the stick in an illegal position will always be a foul on the defense because of the stick positioning. If it is also deemed that the contact is an attack foul, the fouls will be offsetting and alternate possession will be awarded. Substitutions Substitutions are not allowed on redraws and on change of ends in overtime. Obstruction of free space to goal revisited Be sure to review the criteria for obstruction of free space to goal for this upcoming season and retrain your thought process to include the new critical scoring area parameters. If the criteria is ordered to the following sequence, it makes it easier to recognize and call quickly to ensure safety. 1. Is the defender in an illegal position? If yes, you're prepared for the next two steps. 2. Is the ball in the critical scoring area? The ball being in the critical scoring area indicates an increased likelihood for players to shoot the ball. 3. Does attack have opportunity to shoot? If she is double or triple teamed, she is not. 4. Is she looking to shoot? This does not mean that she is staring at the goal. This is the sense that she is attacking towards goal with the intent to go to goal. As number 12 white approaches the critical scoring area, it is clear that the defender is in an illegal position, in the free space to goal and not defending within a stick's length. Number 12 has the opportunity to shoot as soon as she has cleared the other blue defenders. Once she enters the fan, she is in the critical scoring area and looking to shoot. Obstruction of free space to goal should be called. Legal pick. The criteria for a legal pick has not changed. A pick may be stationary or moving, set in the visual field of the opponent, and or allow time and space to stop or change direction before contact occurs. Penalty administration situations at the end of the half or game. If time runs out at the same time as a whistle for a foul, the penalty is not administered. Running clock. If the clock is running and time runs out prior to the completion of a penalty administration, the free position shall not be completed. Misconduct or card. If the half or a game, which goes to overtime, ends with a whistle for a card, the penalty will be administered. Issue a card to the offending player prior to players leaving the field. Begin the second half or overtime with a free position at center for the non-offending team. 
Area of Concern Some of the new rules may impact the amount of time it takes to set the penalty administration because of the movement of players, attention to table management, and communication to players, partners, and coaches. Officials need to be mindful of the time being taken from playing time. Any time that the restart is taking too long, timeout should be called. Thank you for watching the 2016 USL Rule Interpretation DVD. Good luck in your season.